Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm making a box from an old hardcover book. The first step is to carefully cut out the pages from the book with a scalpel. Why destroy a perfectly good book to make a box, you might ask? There are actually a lot of reasons that I've taken apart books in my lifetime, and mostly it comes down to the fact that I really love books. I originally bought this book secondhand to read. It's the complete works of Shakespeare, and it turns out that buying all of the Shakespeare in one collection is a really bad idea. Because it's got so much in it, the pages are really thin and the text is tiny, making it almost impossible to read. It was also really, really heavy. By making it into a box, I can actually enjoy it instead of leaving it unused on a shelf, and I can go and buy some properly designed editions of Shakespeare's plays to actually read. Anyway, after cutting the pages out, I was left with two sturdy covers joined by a paper spine. So the first thing that I did was to reinforce that spine by gluing down a small scrap of tarlatan which is a stiffened open weave cotton that's used in printmaking and is also used for costuming and hat making. I then covered the spine with a page from the book. The next step is to measure everything carefully and construct the boxes. I'm making one box with a base and four sides and one box with a base and three sides. An alternative would be to make two boxes with three sides with both openings at the spine. This type of box has a few names, an oyster box, a clamshell box or a salander box. And it's the type of thing used in art galleries and libraries to store delicate things. I've also made many of these boxes as artist books that hold unbound pages. Here, I'm using strawboard for the box sides and some old recycled cardboard for the bottoms. When measuring, you'll need to take the thickness of your boards into consideration and also the thickness of whatever you're using to cover the boxes so that it opens and closes easily. I like to draw both boxes out in full with their measurements, then draw out each piece of cardboard that I need to cut to make the boxes, marking them off as I cut them. For extra peace of mind, I also write the measurements in pencil on the cardboard pieces just to help keep track of everything. When you're cutting the boards, use a sharp utility knife and a steel ruler and cut lightly in multiple passes. This will produce a much neat edge and it's also a lot safer than trying to do it all in one go. When the pieces are cut, it's time to glue up. Brush PVA glue generously onto the edges of the cardboard that you're sticking down and hold them in place firmly for a couple of minutes until the pieces stay on their own. It's important to leave the boxes for several hours or overnight to dry properly before you cover them. I got impatient and didn't do this and so I had some problems when I was trying to cover my first box.
I was originally going to use pages from the book to cover the straw board, but eventually decided on this burgundy coloured book cloth I found in my studio instead. Book cloth is fabric with a special backing that stops the glue from seeping through. You can buy it from some specialist art shops and you can also make it yourself. I bought mine from Neil Wallace Printmaking Supplies in Melbourne, Australia, who are not a sponsor, but for full disclosure, I did work there before moving overseas and I highly recommend them. I also plan to upload a video down the track where I make my own book cloth, so stay tuned. The first step is to cover the outer and inner sides of each box with a long strip of cloth. Measure the height of your box, multiply that figure by two, and then add six centimetres of overhang. For example, my box is six centimetres high, so I cut my cloth to 18 centimetres. Also measure around the box and add six centimetres of overhang to that amount. My first box was about 68 centimetres around, so I cut my strip of book cloth to 18 by 74 centimetres. The way I'm sticking down the cloth for this first box is not actually how I'd recommend doing it. As I said, I was feeling a bit impatient and I hadn't made one of these for a while, so I got a bit carried away. The order of operation is about right though. Stick the cloth to the side faces of the box first, then move either to the underside or the inside. The tool I'm using to help glue and smooth down the cloth is called a bone folder and it's the single most useful tool that I own. They're made either from bone or plastic, but the plastic ones usually are pretty rough and not very nice to use. This one is a six inch bone folder with a tapered point at one end, which makes it really easy to glue and press right into the corners. You'll need to make some incisions into the cloth to easily fold and stick it down. Some people like to measure and mark and cut these in their cloth before sticking, but I prefer to do it as I go. As you can see in the second box, I've marked out my initial sticking points on the back of the book cloth in pencil, and instead of spreading glue on the box, I'm applying it to the cloth and rolling the box onto it. This gives a much nicer, neater finish, and you're less likely to get bubbles in your cloth. Trim the cloth on the bottom side so you can glue it easily underneath the box. When you get to the inside edges, you'll need to do some slightly tricky trimming so that you can fold everything in neatly without exposing any of the box edges. To do this, you'll need to cut a small obelisk shaped sliver of cloth out at each corner. An obelisk is a long thin rectangle top with a small triangle. It's actually kind of the shape of my tapered bone folder. Once this is done, do a dry run without glue, trim away anything else you need and stick everything down. Don't panic if you cut too much away, just cut another small strip of cloth and glue it underneath the main piece in any exposed spots and nobody will ever notice.
The last step is to cut two pieces of cloth to cover the bases of each box. For boxes with four sides, cut your piece of cloth to the exact inner measurement of the box, and for boxes with three sides, add two or three centimetres to the width, which will fold around the exposed edge of the box. To attach the boxes to the book cover, glue one box in place and then use that as a guide for the second box. Fit this one over the glued down box, apply glue to its base and then fold over the cover and open it back up again. I like to use weights to clamp everything down while the glue is drying and I use a piece of wax paper to protect the book cloth from the weights. And there you have it, a box from a book, ready to fill with 2B or, you know, not 2B pencils. Spines and Splines is all about making fun, creative things while maintaining healthy work habits. So to go with this clamshell box project, we've also made a video that focuses on hip exercises and turnout. Check it out. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share and comment if you liked this video. And stay tuned to Spines and Splines for more creative projects and simple exercises you can do in your studio or workspace. Cheers.